Hey guys, in this episode, I'm gonna call REST API from Blazor Server app. So the very first thing that you have to do, you'll have to inject HTTP client in your Blazor component. And then I'm gonna call get JSON async function from HTTP client to get values from API, the REST API, and then I will store it in my model here. Um, to create new record, you'll have to call post JSON async and uh, delete, delete async is used for deleting and put JSON async is used for updating the records in the API. So I already have an API. People who follow me on YouTube, they know that I worked on this bookstores web API where I created ASP.NET Web API project and connected to my SQL Express bookstore database. <clears throat> and using MTD framework, I created a uh, DB context and uh, then I created API controllers for my, uh, for pulling authors and publishers and users from, from the database. Then I used uh, post, uh, Postman tool to uh, pull uh, to test my API where I was able to pull information and um, you could see that it's returning um, data in JSON format from from the same API. So um, I'm going to use the same API for the demo and I already have been working on uh, my Blazor app where I have uh, authors page and uh, I, have, I was taking input from the edit form and I was showing authors in this HTML table. Uh, the only thing that I've changed here um, is I have uh, converted my author ID into integer so that I can uh, I can pull information uh, so that it matches the information from my API. And another thing, I have removed CD drop down uh, so that uh, it was a server component, it was a razor component, and uh, it was difficult to get information from uh, a, another razor component I did not want to deal with that so I removed uh, I just want to concentrate on calling API today so I removed that and I removed it from the column removed that column from the table view okay um, so yeah let's jump into our demo here uh, so the very first thing that you have to do uh, you have to go into your startup page and um, here you'll have to add um, I'll create a instance. Um, I'm going to create a singleton instance because I want to use that across the application. So I'm going to create a singleton instance of HTTP client and then we'll have to inject this HTTP client into our Razor component. To do that, I'm going to say inject um, HTTP client HTTP. I'm going to name it as HTTP. Um, and then we can use this HTTP in our Razor component. So to pull uh, these authors, I was initializing these authors uh, in my author service, and then I was uh, getting by get authors. Instead of that, we will call our API to get uh, these authors. So I was calling get authors in on initialized async function. So instead of getting authors from author service, I would like to call this API and get information in my author list to show on the UI. Okay, um, so to call HTTP, the very first thing they have to do is uh, HTTP.getJSON async. And here you will have to pass uh, the data type where you want to catch your response. So here we are catching a response in a uh, uh, list of authors. And I would like to uh, catch my response in list of authors too. Uh, you will have to make sure that your author, your author matches uh, the property names of your JSON, property names and data types of your JSON. That's the reason why I converted my author ID into integer so that I get, I could get that information from my API without throwing, so it doesn't throw any, any exception. Um, so yeah, you gotta make sure that you have the property names of your model matches match the property names of your JSON response. 
Okay, so now uh, we want to get JSON async into our list of authors here. Um, and then you pass the link of your, uh, of your API here. As this is an async function, I'll have to add an await keyword. And to get this response in author list, we'll have to say author list equal to this. And I'm gonna um, comment out this code so it doesn't pull information from our old author service. And I'm gonna initialize my author list here because uh, you know we are pulling information from network, and uh, it might delay. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna initialize in case if uh, it takes time to return the information. Okay. Another thing that I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna I wanna order. Um, order by here order by descending so that I see the latest records to do that I'm gonna say order by descending and then I'm gonna say or I wanna order by author ID cool so what I'm doing here I called I called my API and got the response and then I'm ordering it by descending by its author ID so that I could see the latest records. Cool. Let's run this and see what happens. So now you can see that it's pulling information from my API now. It was showing only five records before and now it's showing 29 records um, and it's pulling all the information from my API. You can see that 29 is John Smith. It's pulling it from my database here, from my API. Okay, so uh, that's how you can pull information from um, from an API. Now I would like to create a author and show it in my list here. So to create author, uh, you will have to call post post JSON async, and I already have a save author function where I was saving author saving author in my author service instead of that I want to call I want to call a post post JSON async and here I'm gonna pass the same URL and pass the same URL and also pass author as um, as parameter which will get posted in my JSON and this is the same author that I used in my edit form so that whatever information that I put in my edit form it will get posted when I click on save when I click on save and I'm gonna add an await keyword as this is a async function cool let's run this and see what happens So um, I want to add Bill Gates as my as my new author as my new author. And when I click on save, it says Bill Gates has been saved successfully, but it does not show in my table view here. The and if you want to check in your API, when I refresh my API, you can see that Bill Gates has been saved in my API, but it does not show the reason why it's not showing is because you will have to reload your author list and then you'll have to re-render your page if you want to see your new record in your table view so let's go ahead and do that uh, for that i'm gonna create a private function private function and it's an async function uh, Returns task and I'm gonna call it load authors, which will reload my authors and it will re-render my page so that um, I will see the latest records in my on my screen. Uh, I'm gonna copy the same uh, code from here from which where I got the information from API and paste it here. And after this, I'm gonna say 
state has changed state has changed which will re-render my page that should re-render my page cool um, now let's go ahead and call this load authors after I post my JSON to do that I'm gonna say await load authors cool nice let's run this and see if this works so uh, you can see bill gets already added in my in my database I want to add another bill gates I want to add another bill gates bill gates um, and save it and now you can see that you know it's saved successfully and you see two bill gates in our table view so that means it added in my API in my database it added twice in my this was the one which we added before and this is the latest one which we can see on the screen now um, so yeah that's how you can uh, uh, create a record and <coughs> call your API now that we have um, uh, you know pulled the records from API or we created a new record I would like to add a link here and uh, which will say actions and when I say delete uh, a link called delete which will delete records from from the API see salary is already not there in API in my API you can see it's not one of the fields from uh, the JSON response which is coming from API so um, it's we are not even showing it so I'm gonna get rid of that and instead of that I'm gonna say um, actions so that we can delete the record from my database so instead of salary I wanna say actions and here I'm gonna uh, comment that copy this and I'm gonna comment this <coughs> um, so to add the delete link I already create a created a markup which will look nicer it's it's a link which just looks nicer it's bold and it's blue and it says delete and here I'm gonna call I'm gonna on on click event I'm gonna call a function call a function called as um, delete author and in this function I would like to pass author author ID nice so we don't have this function we'll have to create this function uh, so which will look something similar to our save function so I'm going to copy this and paste it here and say that instead of save it's a delete function and here uh, this delete function takes author ID too so I'm gonna say it takes author ID and here delete uh, JSON is very um, very easy function it's called as uh, delete async and here I'm gonna pass the same URL same URL but it also takes it also takes author ID author ID as parameter so that it knows which author that you want to delete and this is an async function so await keyword of course and then I'm gonna call um, load authors so that it refreshes our screen cool let's run this so you can see that now it shows actions and there is a delete uh, link here we have two bill gets in our uh, in our database now so I would like to delete one of them and I'm gonna delete this latest one boom there you go now you can see that you can delete records and it refreshes the page 
when you delete the record from the database. And I'm going to delete the John Smith too. So John Smith is gone too. Um, and when I refresh my API, you can see only one Bill Gates and there is no John Smith in our database now. Cool. Now that we can uh, delete the record, let's add a edit link here, which when I click on edit, it will fill up my form with the data with the record of uh, where I click on this edit and then I can modify the record which is selected and then when I click on save it will update the record in the database. So first I'm gonna add this edit link uh, to add that which is going to look um, similar to my delete link and I'm going to add a separator and um, instead of calling it delete I'm going to call it edit and instead of calling delete author I'm going to call it edit author function and I'm going to pass the whole author so that I can fill up my edit form. We don't have this function yet. Let's go ahead and create that function. I'm gonna copy this and it's not an async function. So I'm gonna get rid of that. It's an edit author and I'm gonna pass author as an argument here. And I would like to, I would like to assign the past the past or author the past argument to my model here to the model which is which is same as my edit form author, uh, author. okay um let's see how this works now we can see the edit link here right next to delete and when I click on delete uh, when I click on edit you can see Bill Gates whatever record that I'm clicking on it gets filled up in my edit form here in my edit form cool so uh, now that we can see information on the edit form when I click on save I would like to update the record which is selected that is very simple so on save click when I uh, when I do not when I do not have uh, when my author ID is zero, that's when I want to create a new record. Else, I would like to update the record. And for updating, instead of calling post, I'm gonna call put JSON async. And here. I would uh, I will have to pass author uh, author ID so that it can update the author in the in the database. Cool. Let's run this and see what happens. And we're already uh, loading the author, so it will update uh, update our screen too. So I would like to update uh, the email address of Bill Gates. This is not correct email address. So when I click on edit, it fills fills up my form. And here I'm gonna say it's billgates at gmail.com. And when I click on save, you can see that Bill Gates has been saved successfully. And it shows Bill Gates at gmail.com. And when I refresh, when I refresh my API. I refresh my API you can see it got updated in my database too so this is how you can perform the crude operations on your rest API and call um, post put delete get JSON functions um, and use um, HTTP client to do that in my next video I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about how we can uh, how we can pull this user's uh, API 
and we have been working on this demo for a little while and I want to add a login page uh, to our system so that people can um, and add authentication so people who are authorized can log in so yeah and um, ASP.NET uh, gives you an out-of-the-box authentication where you you know check checkbox and create authentication but it uses old razor pages and MVC so I don't want to do that I would like to use a full blazer and create the login page so that's what I'm gonna do in my next video so yeah stay tuned and if you have any questions uh, you can reach out to me on uh, uh, on Twitter or follow me on Facebook the links are in the video description and yeah, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching this video. Bye.